but they're blaming somebody like the fucking car manufacturer or something. Something. Chris. Why are you calling Chris? me? California. <laughs> Chris who? From California? Hello, this is Chris. Chris, you're on with Gary and Kyle. How are you guys? Hey, Kyle, what's up? You are the man. Hey, thanks, man. Appreciate that. What about me, bro? No, you're, you're just you. You're the mentor, the guru. Well, I won't use guru. There we go. Kyle, <laughs> I've uh, corrupted my 13 year old into uh, watching you back in the Monster Energy days and also when you were running the 54 on the truck. Oh, there Love you go. It. Nice. Love it. Real fans. What's your question, my friend? Um, I am a very big car enthusiast, let alone a, I guess we call it NASCAR super fan. Okay. But more importantly, I am starting a podcast with Rodney Allen Rippey from Jack in the Box fame, and he is a huge car fan. Okay. We have gone out and done the social media test marketing, we'll call it, with the nostalgia that you're so big in. Yep. And it's gone very, very well. When Makes it's sense. his face, his name, anything to do with the past and the history, um, we do very well. And if it's a new current face we put him with in just about anything. Um, but, we, you know, we got one great shot of launching this. We're going to do it in SEMA. 2018 this year. You're already over. But where let, me, look, I... let, let me give you some a very good piece of advice. Do not Absolutely. do not put that fake pressure on yourself that you have one chance to launch this thing. It's the biggest mistake that people make with media properties and businesses. They think okay. that there's this, especially if you haven't done it before, or it just it's it's natural human nature, right? You want to come out the right. gate. It's probably no different than starting Daytona off on the right foot, like right. everything. Like when I you want to win right away, you ain't gonna win right away. You got to right. build into it. I, I it, it I really don't want. Here's why I'm most worried about it, my friend. I don't want you to do behaviors that so overvalue the short term in something where you're playing for life. You're trying to build something that you hope pays for your livelihood around some. Up around a passion you have, I assume, right? The idea is you'd love for this to be, whether it's a podcast or a media property, this is what you do for the rest of your life, making the kind of money that lets you live the lifestyle you want. Is that correct? It's, it's one of a few components. I, I am definitely on your um, you know, willing to eat shit as long as it takes mode. Good, so then, um, so then I would say everything sounds great. Don't over worry about the launch because it may be episode 96 that really turns the tide. Does that make sense? Okay, and absolutely. I th- yeah, the luxury you have is that you don't work for a television network. Like ESPN didn't buy the rights to you and then the ratings were bad after three and they cancel it. You have full control of content and distribution. You don't have to worry about popping because you're not at the mercy of Nielsen ratings and advertisers and all the other dynamics that traditional media had to worry about. If you had a radio show you know, 20 years ago around this subject matter, if your first six weeks didn't go well, you're finished. I mean, here in New York, Mike Francesa was the legendary sports guy. He left, retired, they put in a show, it lasted like three, three five weeks and Francesa was back because the ratings weren't there. You don't have that, so don't, I think before you even ask the question to make the launch pop, make sure that you realize you don't need the launch to pop. You, it'd be nice for it to be great, but don't over worry about that. Perfect. No, I really appreciate that because, you know, it's it's to the point where I've got some good guests lined up and things, and we're we're going out at a, a really good time. It's just a matter of I didn't want to leave those four other things on the table, partly because I didn't know what these next four things should be. So that's helped out very well. Good. Yeah. Let it come to you. I think, you know, Kyle. Just to, just for fun here, just because I love sports and like strategy and I, you, the story. I promise you, in 19 years when I run into you on something, I'm gonna recall this because I don't forget <laughs> things that hit me. The fact that you recorded those races, it was over before it started. You were so mentally like knowledgeable. Yeah. It's, why, it's, you know, I, it's how I think about everything. You know, that must have been, that's such a remarkable advantage that you had. I would presume that that's why I could be as good as I am today, but I, I would that. say that it's also due to a lot of hard work over the uh, course no of question, the years, no, right? Qu- no question. But there was a basis, there was a start, so Just, the, yeah. just knowing how the chess moves played out. Yeah. And so, so uh, let me ask you a question. Based on that, and this is tr- gonna help Chris here a little bit, do you fe- I'm very curious about how you handle a bad start to a race. Mm-hmm. And just like, to me, the, the psychology of everything is so interesting. I just know for fact, without knowing any of the racers, that there's a certain percentage of guys who if it doesn't start right, are just in a bad place. 
Yeah, I would agree. Absolutely. I've had those moments. Uh, I would admit that when it, something bad starts and it doesn't quite go right, that it's like, ah, oh, it's over before it started or whatever. You start cussing on the radio and throwing <laughs> everything all, all over the place. Yelling at somebody on a team. Throw, like, right. right. Throwing people under the bus, whatever it might be. <laughs> but, um, you know, sometimes you can work your way back out of those. What is the greatest work your way out of race of your career? Oh, man. Like, um, just really go there with me right now because I think it's interesting. Do you remember a race or maybe, like, just, yeah, like, the first 10 laps or fucking, I don't know, like, all four tires fell off the car in the first lap and then you won it? Like, do you, if you, like, really thought, I'm yeah. buying you some time here to think, really thought about, like, what's the race that I won in my career on the, on the big stage that, that on the, in the series, not earlier than that, that I did not think I was, like, the one that I most, that I won, that I most did not think I was going to win? There's plenty of those out there, but um, <laughs> but that pro- that has a. I would say that there was a race at Watkins Glen uh, years ago, where uh, the first few pace laps, like you're scrubbing your tires back and forth, you're speeding up, slowing down, trying to warm your brakes up and stuff. Okay, and you feel that the lead in, within the frame rails of the car to make the car make weight to go over scales is loose. Like nobody put the spacers in there that hold the lead tight against the bolts. So it's sliding forward when you're on the brakes and it's going backwards when you're on the gas. So it keeps moving and it's a big slam. Like this is 80 pounds sliding around in the frame rail of the car. I have no idea what he's saying, so, but it sounds so fucking smart. Keep going. So, so we had to come down pit road before the race started and actually take the frame, the bolt out of the frame rail, put the spacers in there to, to <laughs> space it back where it needed to be, put the bolt back in and I had to start in the back and I came back through and I don't recall if I won that one, but I know that what I finished. What the fuck? That was the whole point of I it. know that, well dude what happened what, you, you, I know I finished top five but I don't remember if I finished second tell me the truth I don't when remember. you first started telling the story you thought you won and as you were telling you're like fuck wait a minute maybe no, I didn't I win thought, and these internet dudes are like in there like fuck you dude you came in third 13 seconds off the pace which one well yeah hold I mean, on hold on what he broke his foot and won the race and won the race okay no 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 Okay. No, it's different than that. Yeah. Tell me what it is. Tell me what it is. Tell me what it is. Get in here. Chris, get in here. What was it? It was Daytona. Had a bad crash. Was out a good portion of the season. And the first race he came back? Some of the most, some of the most determinated person there is in racing. He came back and uh, pointed his way into the championship and won it. I also won races, by the way, to get my way back in. I get that. But yeah. Yeah. Well. So what you think Kyle's no really awesome, right? Like, does your, son, your, it, does your son like obsess over Kyle? Yeah, more so in trucks and bush because they're shorter races and he doesn't have the attention, attention span. span. But that's why he started back when Kyle was still running the 54. Yeah. Yeah. Those were the truck, truck days. I understand. Truck I understand. The other thing is Kyle's got 92 wins. In, in the secondary series of, of what I'll call the Bush series. Okay. And we went so often that we watched Kyle win every weekend when we were there live. <laughs> Let's actually talk about this. So you're telling me your son is a front runner and jumps on bandwagons? No, he started in diapers at two years old watching Kyle. I love it. That, so that means you made him watch Kyle because I don't know any two-year-old that's like, oh, there's Kyle, I'm going to be a fan. He, you know, he loved Hot Wheels. And <laughs> Fair the Hot Wheels were live, and they were racing Listen, around the track. This is a good battle, Chris. I respect where you're coming from. Listen, M and M's that had something to do with it, probably. Chris, let me give you a piece of advice. It sounds like you're also doing some content with new faces. When you do that, run Instagram and Facebook ads to the tune of a hundred to a thousand dollars a piece around people that are fans of those things. Okay. So, like for example, I'll take this Ask Gary V show, and we will run this episode on Facebook and Instagram against fans we're of. Doing it with the live right now. We're, we're doing it with the live right now. We're running ads against this live right now against what? NASCAR. Kyle. So, so it's really a, what's amazing about the new world is Kyle's getting new exposure to my world and all the entrepreneurs that are watching. Um, and, and honestly, I think what's most interesting to me is I, entrepreneurs tend to be very creative and get caught into storytelling. I, I, I'm just fascinated how many people are gonna actually now watch or become fans off of this. That's how it all works. And vice versa, you'll be able to do that with the people that you put the new faces on with him. So make sure you do that as well, okay? Absolutely, yeah, and I'll, I'll tell you, I'm not a bandwagon guy. My, I know, I know you're not, not. I was making a joke, my, brother. My dad was a, <laughs> yeah, my dad was a senior fan. My mom was a DW fan, so for the NASCAR people, they'll know that. Yep, uh, nice. Yeah. I was an Alan Quickie fan, and unfortunately, he passed away as a champion in a, in a crash at Bristol, and I followed this guy called Jeff Gordon, so I've been around there forever. I've heard there. I respect that, buddy. I'm, there you I'm go. joking around. Nice. Take care. Right on, man. Thanks. 
Good guy. Let's get another one like that, Andy.